Hi, I'm Benjamin Durham. Welcome to the vlog. And here's a time lapse of me getting a haircut because I can't have long hair because I won't have any resources to wash anything. So this goes. All right, my hair is cut and I look like I'm in the military, but I'm ready to go, I think. It's a lot easier to clean short hair than, well, longer hair. Woo! Whoosh, clean, done. Warning, the following content contains nerdy subject matter. No action is required. I just thought you should know. All right, so through this portion of the vlog, I'm gonna tell you or kind of teach you what UMTS bands are and their frequencies and such, and how to figure out which phone you should use on which journey and where. Here I have a really old phone. I don't even know anything about it, so we're gonna just leave it there. An iPhone 4, the new BlackBerry uh, 9900, I think, and the BlackBerry 9780. So which one can you use and where? And why can't you use them everywhere? Well, unless you wanna go overseas and pay extremely large amounts of money, well, you, you can do that, but what I'm going to do when I get over there is I'm going to go to a main city, probably Johannesburg, and purchase a local SIM card. But I have to figure out which phone. So I have already done this. I will be taking the 9780 because it will work, because it has bands 1, 4, and 8 on it. Now, the one that I currently use, which is the 9900, I won't be able to take this or use the 3G bands because it only operates on one, two, five, and six bands. And Malawi bands are eight. As for the iPhone, well, I'm not sure what it supports because this one's broken. Um, it just died on me. When your lock button is uh, broken on the iPhone, you can just buy a few screwdrivers online and uh, make it so that you can take off the back and rip out your battery, just like a Blackberry. So. That's always handy to know. Basically, it just doesn't pick up a signal, so. It's still good as a heavy iPod. Also, if anyone says anything against BlackBerry, well, first of all, they're Canadian. Second of all, I still prefer the physical keyboard, even though I've used an iPhone. I personally think the iPhone's a novelty. I kind of used all of the apps and everything. It's like, yeah, woohoo. And then you get over them, and I use about one other app. For business, these are the greatest things. Ever. Another thing with Blackberries is the data compression. So they use one sixth of the data of let's say an iPhone or an Android because they have data compression supported by only Blackberries, which is actually fantastic, especially when traveling. Okay, as you can see, the laptops move. That means we're gonna go into laptop mode. You can Google UMTS bands and you'll find a large list of global bands. Now from what I can tell, there are 16 bands. On your phone you can go to the device settings or the device info and you can find your band number. You'll want to find your service provider's frequency band. So that'll be a number such as 1900, 1800, 1700, 850, 900 or anything else like that. What you're going to find on your phone is the operating band. You might also find the frequency band, but what we're gonna deal with right now is the operating band. So you go onto Wikipedia because it's very hard to memorize these things. You can copy the chart, whatever, it doesn't really matter. As long as you have internet access, that is. And what you can do is just match up your frequency band and your operating band. After that, you can tell which phone will work in which country and on which service provider. Now another thing, if you were wondering why if I do video editing I don't have a Mac and I have a PC, it's because PCs are amazing. So a few years ago I bought a Mac, uh, it's a 2010 Mac I think, and it's a MacBook. It has degraded so fast, computers do, but this one, it just barely starts. This one we got before the trip. First of all, it's extremely durable, second of all, it's really powerful. It has an i7 quad core processor, 16 gigs of RAM, a very good graphics processor, everything. It's great for editing and it has water drainage. So if you spill something on the keyboard, you just take off the keyboard or if it's not sticky, you let it drain right through the designated water holes. There's like one right here and one right there. Come on, it has drainage. Other than that, it has an anti-glare display. 
it gets really bright. It's very easy to operate and it has all of the ports that you could possibly need. It even has an internal modem. It's extremely durable and it doesn't wear out. One of the greatest things and probably why I will stick with Lenovo even if I'm not traveling is simply this little dot. This wins over trackpads. So this thing I haven't used once since I got the thing. I will show you. Okay, so this right here is the greatest thing ever. So uh, when you're using this, basically this is your mouse, this controls your mouse, and this is your left click, and this is your right click. Now this here is an amazing scroll feature. So you just scroll like that, nothing else to it. And it works perfectly. As I said, I haven't used the trackpad in one heck of a long time. Well, hope I was informative. Uh, hope you have a great day. And you can click the screen to subscribe. Wait for it. There, I got it this time. And I will leave you with a few videos of mine.